In the world of 2019, we often tolerate quite silly statements about climate change with a wry smile. Such statements can be treated with the respect they deserve. When the sources are dubious. And especially if the statements come from a set of people that believe possessing the ability to read words on a piece of paper and then memorize those words and then repeat those words, sometimes almost perfectly, somehow endows them with the climate science knowledge and the moral compass to tell us how to live our lives. But when a statement such as scientists believe that 8% of species are now at threat of extinction solely due to climate change comes from a respected source, it can be troubling and socially dangerous. It can easily influence the young and impressionable and contribute to civil unrest and conflict. The BBC is such a respected source. It is an organisation that has previously earned a highly regarded reputation based on objectivity and impartiality. However, the BBC programme Climate Change The Facts has betrayed that proud heritage. It contains a mixture of misleading and scientifically unsubstantiated statements together with highly charged emotional and biased conclusions. The BBC made this claim at 11 minutes 32 seconds of the programme. Scientists believe that 8% of species are now at threat of extinction solely due to climate change. This statement was made with great gravity and scientific authority. However, on examination, it is a not at all scientific and is in fact based on scientific ignorance. Before proceeding, it is worth pointing out just how imprecise this statement is. What does threat of extinction actually mean? Could the BBC precisely define that? Do you know what that means? Let's take an arbitrary species of bee. Does under threat of extinction mean this entire species will become extinct in the next 12 years, will become extinct in the next 100 years, will become extinct in the next 1000 years, or is it a million years? Or this entire species will eventually become extinct. The lack of precision of the statement ill befits a supposedly scientific programme. The lack of precision also contributes to the difficulty inherent in any attempt to disprove or prove the BBC statement. Do we have to wait 100 or a thousand years to find out if this statement can be falsified? In fact, there is no need for the statement that scientists believe that 8% of species are now a threat of extinction solely due to climate change has a fundamental flaw. It is based on a single premise. The premise is that there is a natural rate of extinctions. Building on that premise, the BBC claims that this natural rate of extinctions is being exceeded by the additional 8% of species now at threat of extinction. We will examine the underlying premise that there is a natural rate of extinctions. To do so, we will seek the help of Charles Darwin. 
Something says he knows quite a bit more about nature and extinctions than these characters. Darwin points out that extinctions do not require cataclysms as they are caused. And furthermore, the extinction of species is not some unnatural event. It is an integral part of the struggle for life in which all nature is engaged. He says it inevitably follows that as new species in the course of time are formed through natural selection, others will become rarer and rarer and finally extinct. To bring out Darwin's point and to marry extinction with climate change events, we can very briefly look at our close cousins, the Neanderthals. We can observe how they adapted to climate change, but eventually became extinct. Apart from certain physical differences, they were very similar to us. They had to struggle for life through truly cataclysmic climate changes spread over hundreds of thousands of years. Around 800,000 years ago, regular cycles of climate change became established on the planet. The cycles saw cold glacial periods lasting approximately 100,000 years when large parts of the northern hemisphere became covered with ice. These cold glacials alternated with much shorter warm interglacials when there was little or no northern hemisphere continental ice. We are now in such an interglacial known as the Holocene. Neanderthals survived these climate changes through adaptation. As the cold glacial periods became established, they migrated further and further from where they had previously settled towards any warmer clime they could find, as over thousands of years the ice sheets extended. However, when a warmer interglacial period arrived, they would migrate back to the once again inhabitable lands. During such a warm interglacial period, Neanderthals occupied Britain. Fossils of very early Neanderthals, dating to around 400,000 years ago, have been discovered in Kent. While during another warm interglacial period, classic Neanderthals had arrived in Britain. Their fossils, about 225,000 years old, have been found at Pont Newydd in Wales. Although modern human beings had existed for around two to three hundred thousand years, it seems they did not reach Britain until around 40,000 years ago. At around a similar time, the Neanderthals became extinct. Various theories as to the cause of extinction have been put forward, but in essence, we do not know. And quite probably, there was no one single cause, but an accumulation of contributing factors. It was not the result of some cataclysmic event. The extinction of the Neanderthals was a natural outcome of the struggle for life that is an essential part of our natural world. That brief history shows us how even advanced species die out over time. For a broader perspective on extinction, we now turn to The Ancestor's Tale by Richard Dawkins. He makes these points. Extinction is the eventual fate of nearly all species. Perhaps 99% of all species that have ever existed have gone extinct. The natural association with apocalyptic carnage needs to be tempered. 
The rate of extinctions per million years is not fixed. On this latter point, there have been learned attempts to chart extinction events in order to determine some mathematical formula. But the conclusion is the rate of extinction per million years is not fixed. This fact contradicts the very premise upon which the BBC statement rests. The premise is scientifically incorrect and therefore this statement is false. There is no such thing as the natural rate of extinction. So, statements such as this are based on ignorance and a false premise and are quite simply false. And by the same logic, the BBC statement, scientists believe that 8% of species are now a threat of extinction solely due to climate change, is just not true. It can be seen to be full of scientific holes that are filled with emotive bias. It is very difficult to explain the BBC's position on this and quite difficult to understand how such a statement can be believed. But 160 years ago, Charles Darwin managed to do exactly that. He did so in this statement. Nevertheless, so profound is our ignorance and so high our presumption that we marvel when we hear of the extinction of an organic being. And as we do not see the cause, we invoke cataclysms to desolate the world or invent laws on the duration of the forms of life. It is worth pausing to consider just how wisely and how accurately this statement forecasts modern concerns and behaviours. We'll go through the three components of Darwin's analysis. First, he says that nevertheless so profound is our ignorance and so high our presumption that we marvel when we hear of the extinction of an organic being. In effect, he is saying that the BBC is asking us to marvel at the spurious problem of extinction events happening at a rate faster than the normal rate because the BBC's profound ignorance and presumption. Secondly, he says, as we do not see the cause, we invoke cataclysms. The cataclysm invoked by the BBC, along with others, is the so-called climate change crisis. Thirdly, Darwin warns us against inventing laws that purport to describe the duration of the forms of life. But this is exactly what the BBC has done. These laws apparently can predict 8% of species are under threat of extinction. But just how does the BBC and the quoted but unnamed scientists arrive at such an exact figure as 8%? Especially as the rate of extinction per million years is not fixed. How is it possible to calculate that 8% of species are now at threat of extinction? 8%! What were the premises upon which any such calculation could be based? It is quite clear that this calculation was based on an invented law. 
or perhaps the BBC threw figures in the air. Or perhaps a faceless BBC committee thought eight sounded reasonable, high enough to cause alarm, but small enough to be credible. It is difficult to believe that any scientific process came up with that precise figure. Whatever the process employed, statements such as this and this are scientifically false and should be ignored. As Charles Darwin might say, these statements are based on presumption and ignorance. A less charitable opinion might say they are based on bias and fear-mongering. Please look out for more videos that will be produced demonstrating how factually incorrect were many of the statements made in the programme Climate Change the Facts and the staggering amount of ignorance of climate change science being broadcast. It is worth reminding ourselves of the damage such statements are causing and just why the silent majority needs to arm themselves with climate science knowledge. Climate science ignorance and biased broadcasting are causing civil unrest. We can fight ignorance with facts. We have been quiet for far too long.